So uh, thanks for uh, joining the presentation. Um, I will talk about uh, QGIS server in an enterprise environment. Um, so first, uh, short about me. I'm, my name is Jakob Mix. I'm a software developer at the company Citicom. You can find me at various places in the internet. And um, our company is uh, doing tele telecommunication uh, solutions and uh, among many other things. And I'm part of the um, smart infrastructure and broadband um, department, um, especially pl um, for planning uh, optical fiber. And uh, in this context, we are developing an internal um, spatial data infrastructure, and we were evaluating a couple of uh, mapping servers. So, um, and we finally try um, use a QGIS server. And I would like to um, present you what we have learned, what we use it for, um, what our current challenges are. <coughs> And uh, also, I want to give you an introduction, actually, what it is and how to use it and install it. So first, I will start with an, a rough overview. Then um, I give you an, um, some uh, ideas how to configure it, how to install it, show you an example project. Then I want uh, to especially uh, focus on uh, the connection between, between PostGIS and uh, QGIS server then how we use it in the company, and then our plans for the future and uh, final conclusion. So QGIS server is a um, geodata server for uh, WMS, WFS, and WCS, and uh, also OGC API features. Um, it's already also in development, and uh, but I haven't tried it yet. So, and the cool thing is it can pretty much read everything what a QGIS desktop can read, and it renders the data exactly as QGIS desktop renders it. And this was the unique selling point uh, why we decided to use a QGIS server, because uh, we have uh, our planners, they really uh, have a lot of um, sophisticated uh, styles um, for their um, domain-specific uh, um, uh, tasks, and we would like to have them exactly like them in the web GIS because, uh, like, converting styles sometimes works, but very often you lose something, and that's why we are really happy that we can use the exact same rendering engine as QGIS Desktop has. Then um, the configuration works uh, exactly. Um, also in a QGIS project, I will show you in a minute where you can do this. And um, one thing which is um, which is important to know when you install your uh, QGIS server is that it actually doesn't directly come with a server. It's a fast G uh, CGI program, which is a it's called it's common gateway interface. So it's basically a, a program that runs locally, and then you need an additional web server, like Nginx or Apache, um, to connect to this fast CGI interface. And then you can uh, publish it to the web so that uh, uh, other programs uh, or websites can actually access it. So, And this is the part where you actually need to do some manual configurations here. Then uh, a short uh, comparison. Uh, to uh, GeoServer, because this is also a very um, popular uh, server. So um, here I just have a picture like what GeoServer can read and what it can publish. And I just uh, strike through the things that uh, QGIS Server cannot do. But so you see it's still quite a lot of things. And actually, it can read and publish the things that most people uh, use, in my opinion. So it's should be uh, used uh, can, can be used for most uh, um, applications, but of course always depends. Then, so how to install it? Um, there is a, a manual um, where you there is instruction how to install it on Linux or Windows. So you, uh, of course, you can build it from source directly, or you can uh, use uh, pre-built. Uh, uh, options and then you still have to configure it with your own uh, Nginx or Apache. And there's, of course, a Docker image, which is our preferred way to install it. And there's actually multiple uh, Docker images. So um, there's the, an official one, which is relatively new, then one from Auslandia, one from Camp to Camp, then uh, QWC services, Cartosa, and uh, Hookla. 
And um, so the official one is the one we are currently using. Um, uh, they state on the website it's not ready for production yet, and that's why we would like to test it and make it ready for production at one day. And uh, yeah, so it also depends um, what uh, your um, looking for because all of them have some different flavors and uh, some uh, how how they they are configured um, yeah so then how can you uh, actually um, configure the a project uh, itself or Q uh, QGS uh, server itself so um, when you want to publish some layers you create a, a QGS project add some layers to it and um, then they, it will be understand by QGIS server and can be published. And you can store the QGIS project either as a file or in a, a post.js uh, table. And the QGIS server has to have access to this, of, of course. Also, there are some um, global settings that you can uh, give to uh, do with QGIS server, like um, how many processes it should have or some really low level things, you can do this with environmental uh, variables. So uh, let's have a look how a project could look like. So we have a very simple project with uh, three layers here. And if I would like to use it for QGS server, um, I go to project properties, uh, QGS server, and then I have uh, many tabs here where I can do some um, settings. For example, I have one for WMS, and uh, WFS and uh, many more. And the interesting thing is that uh, WMS, or all, la all, all layers are directly published as WMS. And um, you can also do some extra settings. So for example, one, when you want to do a feature info request, then normally only the um, attributes come back, but you can also set that the geometry should re be returned. This is especially useful if you connect uh, WebGIS to your QGIS server. And um, for the WFS, you have uh, explicitly uh, to publish your layers. So um, you just go to the WFS tab, then you click on the layers uh, you would like to publish. And it's also possible actually to um, make some CRUD operations, so you can even um, edit uh, data via um, WFST, so the transactional version, and then you can manually um, say what operation should be allowed and what should not be allowed, but we currently don't use this feature yet. Also one um, very convenient thing is that uh, you can um, go to the layer properties um, of your layer, and for every um, attribute you can create an alias, because very often these attributes of your layer are not really um, intuitively understandable, but you can write an alias there, and then QGIS server will use this alias to publish your data, so it will be much easier to, to understand for external users. Then uh, how to um, access a QGIS server? So this is a very simple um, request. So first of all, I have here my um, endpoint. Then I say it should be, um, I want the service WMS, and I want to have the get capabilities document, so where everything is described, what, this, uh, what kind of WMS the server offers. And then it's very important that I have to specify which QGIS project I would like to have. So I have to um, this map parameter, and I have to point to the um, file, the QGIS project file, um, where um, the QGIS server should open. But this is um, obviously not so beautiful, and there's another option um, to actually put also the QGIS project inside a database. And um, this is uh, a bit nicer because then many people can access it at the same time and then there's no problem uh, with multiple editing because the last person always wins. And uh, this is very important if you want to store your uh, QGS projects um, in PostGIS and want to read it with QGS server, you have to use this command line, I uh, know this environmental variable um, uh, cache strategy periodic and then it will um, instantly update um, your services when the respective QGIS project has been updated. So 
but the problem is when you want to open um, a project which is stored in uh, Post.js, it looks a bit dip more difficult. So first of all, uh, you have to um, add the post uh, uh, Postgres connection, so with username, password, and everything. So this looks really ugly. And also, the normal user should not uh, provide this. So there's one uh, simplification that can be done. Um, you can use uh, so-called service files, which I will explain on the next slide. So then it will be simplified. Um, you just have to show where the database is located. And then you can uh, just uh, say here, my, I have a service called my service. And this comes in the next slide. Um, it's pretty much one uh, file on your uh, computer where you have stored a lot of uh, Postgres connections, uh, which are called so-called services, and uh, you can name them differently. So you can say um, post like my my connection A, my connection B, whatsoever. In my case, I say my it's called my service, and then I can write down um, all the credentials. And this file is located somewhere on the. Um, QGIS server instance, and uh, QGIS server has access to that. So, and then it only needs to provide uh, the name of the service and does not need to provide the, um, the, the credentials directly in the URL. So, then it uh, looks like this. So, if, let's say I have um, three different uh, QGIS projects. So one is Riga, one is Helsinki, one is Tartu then I can add this uh, project uh, name here. But we still found this is not uh, nice enough. So um, we thought it's a bit of a challenge because the client, the web GIS, or the, the users directly should have a really simple interface. And they should not actually uh, deal with database credentials at all because of security uh, concerns and so on. And so the solution was to uh, build a um, reverse proxy between uh, the client and QGIS server. In this case, it's the Nginx um, uh, server, what we use here. And so <coughs> this uh, figure shows like the basic uh, process, how the data is processed with QGIS server. So I will start very at the beginning. So here you have a user, what's, for example, a person typing uh, using a web GIS doing a WMS request. So it has the base URL, says a slash API, tar2, and then does a WMS request. Then um, we have a backend written in Go, which does some custom, custom business logic and also authentication. This will um, add a header um, to um, tell a QGIS server later on um, to adapt the links inside the capabilities document um, that it looks for the client as the um, project would be served directly by the Go backend. <coughs> um, I will come to this uh, later in a minute. Then this uh, WMS request will be forwarded to the engine X, which um, does a URL rewrite. So the, here is the phrase tar2 will be taken and um, the re URL will be rewritten, or like written at all. So um, it adds this uh, PostgreSQL service and the project Tartu. And here it references um, a service um, which is written in the PG service file. And this will be uh, sent to QGIS server. QGIS server uh, gets this request and uh, sees, ah, OK, they ref reference a uh, custom service. I'll look into my PG service file, finds the credentials, and then can access the PostGIS database where um, the uh, QGIS project is located and also all the layers. And then it sends back the geodata to QGIS server. and um, this uh, makes a, a WMS or WFS response and uh, sends it back to Nginx and uh, through uh, the Go backend. And again, why we need this header? So let's say if this person makes a um, get capabilities request, you get an um, XML document with all references to the different um, layers um, what you have. And is within this network, um, QJS has a um, 
own domain, or in, in our case, we have a Docker image, with, which is called a QGIS server um, with a specific port. And if you don't configure anything, then the capabilities document just um, has the URLs written like QGIS server Docker image, um, colon, and then the port name, and so on. And this should not be exposed to the user. And when you add this header, this um, internal um, URL will be overwritten by the URL the user should see from outside. So this um, is very important that you don't expose any internal information to the outside. And yeah, so with Nginx, you can actually really fine tune um, how the URL should be rewritten. So um, this kind of depends on your uh, business logic, what you have. So um, yeah, so you can, it's really powerful, but I found it a bit uh, complicated at the beginning, but at one point you get into this. All right, then uh, for uh, future topics, Currently, um, we have to configure all the QGIS projects uh, manually. So we have a lot of different projects, and then I have to manually uh, drag in the layers and publish them or not, and so on. And it would be much nicer to do this in an automated way. And there's actually a new um, project uh, called QSA, so QGIS uh, Server Administration, which, is a, um, which provides an uh, API to QGIS server, so you can automatically configure your Q, uh, QGIS server projects. Um, we haven't used this yet, but um, we are trying to uh, use it and also make some improvements if possible. Then also we would like to uh, use the um, new OG, OGC API um, standard, so for example OGC API features. Um, we tried it already, but there was some uh, feature missing what we were needing. Then in the future, we would also like to edit the, the geodata directly from outside. But uh, currently, it uh, works with WFST. Uh, and this is, you have to send XML doc documents um, through QGIS server, which is not super nice, it, uh, especially nowadays when the whole web is working with JSON. And yeah, so another thing is that we would like to directly integrate it in our uh, desktop environment and uh, because currently we only um, implement it in our web GIS. And uh, QGIS server has also many more features which are interesting, for example, PDF printing. You can uh, create uh, really uh, sophisticated reports in a QGIS desktop, and those can be um, uh, dynamically um, sent to the client. And so you can create reports. Uh, you can get it by, uh, via PDF. And you can do all the configuration in QGIS desktop, so you can kind of configure both worlds. And um, also, QGIS server, we found some um, performance issues, so you can of course uh, handle them. But at, um, so we are working with some caching and so on, and we are still uh, trying to find out um, more how to do this uh, in a better way. Then uh, finally, um, some uh, conclusion. So um, what is good about it, uh, the styling is exactly like uh, in QGIS desktop. And also, the configuration can be done with the directly in the user interface, which is also a bad thing, which I will come to in a moment. And uh, accessing the database can also be a bit complicated. So we figured out how to do this with this uh, PG service files. Um, it kind of. Um, uh, it, it's like at the first moment, it's it's very it's a bit complicated. But once you got it, you find uh, I found it. It's really elegant, a nice way to to handle it. But yeah, you need to get into it. The not so good side is that the automated uh, configuration does not uh, work yet, but it's in progress. And of course, it does not uh, support everything what, for example, Geo Server or Map Server does. But uh, this is just depends on your project. And the installation um, also uh, really depends on your use case, so you still have to configure a lot by yourself. Then um, I have some links for you, and just a uh, QGIS-related off-topic uh, thing is that um, in our company we developed um, a QGIS plugin repository um, written in Go language, where we, because we have some internal QGIS plugins, and that's the way how we um, distribute them through our colleagues. Uh, it's open source, you can check it out, and it works in Docker environment, and yeah, so if you would like to try and have feedback, we, we are very happy about it. 
Good, then um, thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions. Thank you, Jacob, for your nice presentation. Question, please. Do you have any experience on the performance if you <laughs> compare it, for example, GeoServer or MapServer? When would you recommend to use a QGIS server for a client? So the unique selling point is the styling that it's exactly looking like a QGIS desktop, and we have like you know hundreds of different styles which are only written in QGIS. So that's why. Um, that's the only way we can uh, publish them at all, but I, I have not done a per performance comparison, but I can imagine that uh, maybe other servers are faster in terms of WMS. And yeah, so this is the bottleneck, the rendering of the WMS. And of course you can tweak some stuff, but I still have to figure out. So, but I would, re would rec recommend if you only need to publish one or two layers, then maybe GeoServer or MapServer are maybe faster and so. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, do you have any experience or of uh, how to improve uh, WMS services performances by putting it behind CDN or, for example, Cloudflare? Uh, did you have some ideas about that? Because we are thinking about that and then and, and yeah. checking out maybe someone has already uh, thought about this and uh, yeah. have experience. Yeah, so um, what, we, what I'm currently trying is to use the program called Varnish. So it's a cache, it remembers the requests and I just uh, made some time to remember for three minutes or so. That's why when the same tile is requested, um, it will be just stored for three minutes in the cache and then it will not be re-rendered. Also, um, in, uh, in our WebGIS, we, uh, we use the tiled version of uh, WMS, so it will always um, request the same dimensions of the tiles, so um, then you can also cache them better. And uh, yeah, honestly, I still need to figure out how the caching in QGIS server itself works, so um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so currently we use Varnish and it works quite nicely. Hi, uh, can you maybe uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the scaling? Let's say, like, if we have, if we want to have multiple servers talking with the same QGIS project, is it possible? Um, so you mean that uh, you like where are the I mean, project uh, stores? Now I want to basically I want to create a system where uh, I have multiple. So, for example, we do this with GeoServer where. Uh, we actually, once the request comes, we will decide from, let's say, like the six geo server that we have, uh, depending upon the availability, the request will go to a server and then it'll just stick there for the entire session. Yeah. So can we do something similar? Uh, yeah, well? actually I'm uh, currently experimenting with this as well, that you, in our Docker Compose setup, um, I have multiple instances of uh, QGIS server. And uh, so uh, then when you see in the log files, you can see that uh, different instances of QGIS server are called. So I have not made like a performance comparison yet, but this is also one uh, way how to increase the performance. Uh, yeah, with the same project, yeah. Um, maybe just to answer that question, also like just a that works, so you can essentially start QGIS server in like, I don't know, how many, however many containers you want. If your database backend behind that can deal with that, so because they look all into the same database, then you should be fine if you have a load balancer in front of that. And it might be a bit tricky in terms of caching. So if you have a tile cache in between or something like that, it depends on a little bit what you have around. But basically that works if you just like spin up a dozen of instances of QGIS server, and if your database can deal with that, then you're fine. Otherwise, if you build Docker containers in a way that you essentially put everything into the Docker container, so that the container is it's basically self-contained, like has no external dependencies, then you should have no problem at all. Yeah, uh, just one more thing about this tiling. Um, when you request uh, tiled WMS, uh, you have to um, 
think about that, for example, labels are always um, on, like could be cut off at tiles, and when two um, bordering tiles have both cut off labels and they're not uh, cut off at the right position, it can, you can have really strange artifacts, and there's actually one uh, kind of hidden setting in QGIS where you can force uh, QGIS that the labels should always be completely inside of your tile, then you don't get strange artifacts. So 